Oh, praise be unto God. We have some uh, problems, technical problems with the um, um, with the Facebook Live uh, this morning, and we'll just um, we have gotten back on there. And thank you for that song. Um, now we want you to open your Bibles. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of First Kings. Uh, the chapter is the chapter is um, sixteen, and we'll pick up reading this morning uh, at verse number uh, twenty-eight. I believe it is. Uh, it might have been twenty-five. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to start here at verse. 25 and we'll go uh, to a few of the following verses okay here. now we're studying here I'm, we're picking up um, where we were talking about yesterday about Am Amri There had been coups ever since Jeroboam. Ever since Jeroboam reigned and turned the heads of uh, uh, to worship idols. That was a, a time and that God's anger went against them. And uh, Amri was no different. He killed the king. The army put him in. But he did wickedly. And because of that, God, God lets us know. You can't, you can't do wicked in his face. And think you're going to get away with it. Amri was a man of worldly ambition and self-exaltation. You ever known people to be like that? Yes, you have. We know this for he accepted the appointment of the armed forces when they proclaimed him king. And he spent four years struggling to secure the power of the throne. And moreover, Scripture declares that he lived a more wicked life than any of the kings who had ruled before him. His ambition to be exalted as ruler over the northern kingdom was not born of a righteous heart that wished to serve, but of a sinful, wicked heart. That's what we we gotta we gotta keep in mind. It was a wicked heart. Ambition, brothers and sisters, listen to me now, and you listen to me good. Ambition uh, is a good, commendable quality that we should possess without ambition little of significance would be achieved in life so i am not i am not talking about you having a desire to excel in what you do i think you ought to work hard to be the best you can be to serve the best you can serve, to give the best you can give, and humbly serve one another as you serve the almighty God. You ought to do that. Yes, ambition is a good thing. However, our ambition must be to achieve not be 
to take somebody out so you can hold their position. It's a, and and any time that your that your ambition tears down another person, I'm going to tell you, God was not in that. God was not in it. My brothers and sisters, our ambition is a good thing. Amron, Amron, he didn't, uh, he didn't have a, a righteous heart. He did not have a spirit of uh, of helping. Others. Far too many. Far too many. Serve in leadership positions. Attempt to dominate. And exercise extreme authority. Over people. Hoping to build up. Our own name. Uh, Securing honor and attention for our sales. If that's what you're doing, I want you to know God is not pleased with that. I just want y'all to know that. God is not pleased with that. When you tear down, when you tear down to build your story, yourself to it, Jesus taught about you this self-exaltation. Listen to the scripture. Listen to the scripture. Jesus said in Matthew 23 and verse 12, And whosoever shall, be, shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. See, you got to know how heaven thinks you ought to be exalted. In Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 16 says, Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise, in your own conceits. Let's see how let's see how the amplified version says about that. It says live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, snobbish, high-minded, exclusive, but readily adjust yourself to people, things, and give yourselves to humble task. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceits. Now y'all see, y'all see how you see how the Bible helps us to ground ourselves. Amen. It helps us, the scripture helps us to, to be grounded in ourselves by lifting up the other people around us. When you do that, God is pleased with you. In 1 John um, chapter 2, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things uh, are, that are in the world. If any man love the, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What we, what we must do is we must allow God's way to work in our lives. There's a powerful scripture 
in the book of Philippians, the second chapter. He says in verse 1, if there be therefore, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, did you see this? If you've got some mercy, if you have fellowship, if you can, amen, let, have bowels of mercy, fellowship with the Spirit, comfort of love. Somebody needs some love. You are God's consolation to those who are going through so much in their life. He says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Don't let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man, amen, also on the things of others. And then he says, let this kind of a mind be in you. Why, Pastor? Because this was the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, we, we ought to get up praising him this day. We ought to get up and thank God for all that he has done in our lives. Yes. Ambition. There's nothing wrong with ambition. But you've got to center it not on your pride. Don't allow your pride to wipe away all of the good that God has for you. Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah the prophet says, For thou hast Said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the midst of the, uh, amen, in the midst of, in the, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. That's what God told Satan when he got high minded. When he wasn't on the same level with God. My brothers and sisters, don't try to exalt yourself. This is what Amri did. So don't you do that. The Bible says he walked in the ways of Jeroboam and in his sin by which he made Israel sin to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger with their idols. God ain't taking no other. He ain't go. He ain't go be no other. He ain't go be in rivalry with nobody. Just be clear to that. He is not gonna be in rivalry with no one. And so, my brothers and sisters, we just must understand. And then, so here we are. Verse 28 says, and Amri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. Ahab, his son, reigned in his stead. And verse 25 says this. 29. 
says this. In the 38th year of Asia, king of Judah, Ahab, son of Amri, began his reign of 22 years over Israel in Samaria. And Ahab, son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all, above all before him. As it, as it, as if it had been a light thing of Ahab to walk in the sin of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. He took for a wife. Jezebel, daughter of uh, Ethabah, king of the, of the Sidonians. Uh -huh. And served Baal and worshiped him. My brothers and sisters, there was an evil reign of Ahab who inherited a stable government from his father Amri -am for this point to the end of first kings Ahab reign is covered unfortunately this is not because of significant contribution made by the king, but because of the extreme wickedness and the terrible impact he was to have upon both the northern and the southern kingdoms. Keep in mind that the purpose of Scripture is not to give a secular history of these kings, but to show how they and the Israelites responded to the Lord. They either lived for the Lord or they lived for the world and themselves. I come to tell you that Jesus taught I know men say, oh, you can, you can go, the, go the way of your choice. You're big on, on you having a say in where you're going. Not let, and you do, you do. But here's what Jesus said. Here's what Jesus said in Luke 13. Uh, Jesus said, For the people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that uh, amen you you got to know that God has a has a place for you. And God says in Matthew 7, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. 
and many there be which go therein at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few be, be a few there be that find it. And you see what God is doing. You see what God is doing. God is saying to you and I, there's only two ways. You either go God's way or the way of the world. God's way brings you life. The world brings you death. My brothers and sisters, we've got to, we've got to recognize that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeking. And so it is. And so it is with you and I. We, Ahab, king of, of, uh, uh, of the northern, uh, northern tribe of the children of Israel, but his wickedness will spill over not only to the northern kingdom, but to the southern kingdom, the, the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, we have too many people today following man's way. Jesus said in that same chapter in the book of Matthew chapter 7, he says in verse 21, not every one of you, not everyone will receive. Amen. Will every, every, not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. My brothers and sisters, many good people will go and say, Lord, we did many things in your name. But let me tell you something. See, I don't bother anybody. I don't, I don't try to knock down anybody. But I just want you to know, God's word only speaks of one way. One way in and one way out. Amen. There is no, there is no way God has more than one way that And that one way is embodied in the church that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And he didn't, and, and he didn't build one for John the Baptist. He didn't build one for Elias, uh, John the, a, a man. He didn't build one for Moses. If anybody was going to get one, Moses ought to have one. But God said, Jesus is my beloved son. Hear ye him. There was a time when I thundered from Mount Sinai, spoke to Moses, go and let tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Uh, amen. But now, but now I say, hear ye Jesus. There was a time when the prophet Elias was able to go and call on heaven to come down and take up the altar, uh, amen, and drink up the water, everything. I come to tell you, I just spoke through Elijah that at that time, but now I am speaking through Jesus. There was a time when I spoke and gave wisdom to Solomon, but now I say a greater than Solomon is here and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Uh, Ahab. Ahab was a wicked king. He was a wicked king. Yes. And although, although Ahab's evil reign of 22 years is one of the major subjects of the remaining of 1 Kings, 
the present passage lays the groundwork for his wicked, degenerate, can I can think of any, unholy life. Under his reign, the depth of spiritual decline reached all throughout the ages that he was there. Yes, the Bible says he erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. And they had made an Asherah idolous, idolatrous symbol of the goddess Asherah. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel before him. In his days, Hela, the Bethlehemite, built Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of the life of, of Abiram, his firstborn, set up its gates with the loss of his younger son, Shagarab, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Joshua, the son of none. My brothers and sisters, you can, you can get wicked and your, wicked, your wickedness will destroy. You will destroy your family. Praise be unto God. God bless you. God be with you. Praise be unto God. We're going to open up the prayer lines now. And uh, if you would like to have prayer, you give us a call and we'll pray with you. We'll pray for you that our God will strengthen your life. Yes, the picture of Ahab's reign is that of a corruption and this depravity of the human heart. It was just horrendous evil uh, and and that's what we we've, we've got to come to know the evil that can come into a person 571 1240 if you would like to have prayer you give us a call so sorry we had trouble with Facebook Live this morning. Um, we had uh, rural, rural Ramos Mal Malande out of, uh, out of uh, uh, the Phil Philippines was with us this morning. And I uh, just want to say may God be with them and in the Philistines. Sister Angelica Robertson says, please, prayers for my workplace and the kids all around the world. That's right. That's right, baby girl. That's what God wants. He wants us to pray for. You know, the, we're, we're, we're living in some terrible times now. You know, we're living in some very troubled times. Uh, but, but we've got to know that God... God can provide for us. Whenever we set our hearts and dictate and allow evil to enter in, it will dictate. Will dictate. Brother Tashambi says, Pray for my family and I, as well as my friends and the world. Thank the Lord for his mercy and grace. That's right, my son. That's right. Sister Marilyn, 
Got two phone calls, Pastor. Praise God. Uh, hello, caller. Welcome to the morning meditation with God. Can we help you? Oh, praise God. Yes, I have Sister Mormon this morning. Oh, I just said I have trouble to get to the call, but look, God, thank God for the strength. Amen, the Sister. Ball, it, 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 it's a blessing to be able to talk. It is, Brother Sister. Jesus. I know it that's is, right. I is. know that you know, is we right. We just have so many blessings, but I just want to thank God for what He has already done for me. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hey. Amen. Oh, that's so beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, sister. Amen. And I want to thank him for what he's going to do because I got his word and I got his trouble. Amen. I stand on his word, Pastor. When I can't stand on my feet, that's good news. Yes, yes. I'm like, these, we need good news. Good news. I'd like to have prayer for you and your wife and family and for all the ones that you prayed for this morning, for all the ones that call in and test in and all over the world. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Sister Sister Mormon, uh, Sister Marilyn Wester uh, put some smiling faces up there, and uh, I have missed hearing her voice. Amen. Uh, may God continue to bless you. So, Sister uh, Mormon, they're thinking about you. Hello, caller. Welcome to the morning meditation with God. Have they hung up? Have they hung up? No, good morning. Good morning. How are you this day? Hi, this is Brother Jackson over here. Pastor Stephen, I enjoyed the message you put out this morning. Thank you. In the matter of Jeremiah. It's just like fire. You shut up in your bones. <laughs> you can get the word out. You, know, you, wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be quite comfortable doing you know, it. I think about y'all guys getting up and spending a lot of your time for the Lord. You know, for us. You yeah. know, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for the word. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Jax. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to our God in prayer. Dear God and Father in heaven, as we come with a bowed head and humbled heart, we recognize that we can't come in our own name because we're not good enough. So we come in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that, for the love that he showed and demonstrated at Golgotha's Hill. 
We pray for Thank you for Sister Marmon giving her strength today. And Sister Marilyn Wester for her family and her and her uh, 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 co-workers. Uh, we pray for them. We pray uh, for all that are, our Brother Tashambi is asking prayer for his family. Would you please be with them, Lord? Go with us today and have us to walk with you, O God. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for this week, and I'm glad to have been with you. Look forward to being with you on Monday, if it's the Lord's will. Until then, know this. Our God loves you, and so do I.